begged her to stop nipping on that elderberry wine. Mom, Uncle Joe, what are you talking about? You haven't even opened the telegram yet. Yeah, when you do, it'll probably be collect. And Winnie was a miserly old skin flint. Rest her dear sweet soul. <laughs> Wait a minute, Uncle Joe. I think we're barking up the wrong telegram. Arriving on four o'clock train this afternoon to investigate facilities of your hotel for convention of... 40 company salesmen. Signed Brooks T. Webster, vice president. What's that say? Groverdale. Groverdale Lumber Gravel and Soft Drink Company. They do the biggest gravel and soft drink business in these parts. 40 <laughs> guests. Wow, we could sure use the money they'd bring in. Use it. We could kiss it. <laughs> Betty Joe, you run up to the hotel and start getting room number 12 ready for Mr. Webster. Here. Yes. Oh, and tell your sisters to start dust in the lobby. You hear it, Kate? It was just knocking. Knocking? What was knocking? I didn't hear anything. Opportunity. I don't see how you could miss it. Don't you see, Kate, a big business tycoon like Mr. Webster would be plenty impressed if I was a wine steward serving vintage red eye with every meal. Red vintage red eye with uh, meat, of course, and white vintage red eye with chicken, of course. Yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. We can't dig a cellar, Uncle Joe. We don't have the time, and we have less money. Boy, have we got less money. No time nor money ain't needed, Kate. That case black, you're ready now to move in them high-class cherries and musky tails. Here, you go in and see for yourself. Oh, all right, Uncle Joe. You are stubborn, aren't you? <laughs> I prefer to think of myself as strong-minded. <laughs> hey, Kate! I just found an old horseshoe I lost when I was pitching him up here last summer. That means we're going to have nothing but good luck. Could have caused that. Kate! 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 Kate, are you all right? Yeah, Uncle Joe, I'm all right. Well, Did thank heavens! Me? Thank heavens you're not hurt! Sure, but I hope you won't mind if I recommend you stop just standing there and start get, getting me out. Kate! Kate, you're safe, ain't you? Safe, yes. Comfortable, no. So get moving, please. Yeah, right. Well, now don't panic, Kate. Hey, I'll, I'll get you help. I'll bring a whole gang of people. I'll bring a state militia. I'll bring tanks. I'll bring an elephant. I'll bring, I'll bring help. Uh, Kate, don't panic now. All right, Uncle Joe. I'll be nice and calm, just like you. Yeah, had a girl. Had a girl, Kate. Now you're talking. <laughs> Don't get excited. Don't panic. Your mother's buried alive. She's what? Uncle Joe, what are you talking about? Yeah, you, 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 now, I beg you not to panic. Now, we're not panicking. Just tell us what happened. Well, your mother's not hurt. Now, now don't go worrying. She, she's trapped in her new wine cellar. Now, the first thing to do after you settle and collect yourselves is to let's see. No, that won't work. Well, I got it. <laughs> girls, girls, wait for me. You need somebody in charge that's got a cool head. <laughs> Uncle Joe, Betty and Bobby went on down to the cave. Now, you go ahead with them, and I'll, I'll watch the desk. Right. You watch the desk. I'll go to the cave. And don't get excited. Mom! Mom, can you hear me? Mom, talk to us, please. Over here, girls. Look over here. I found a hole. Oh, oh. oh there you are. Mom, you okay? Yeah. Where's the rest of you? Well, this is as wide as it is, and the... Edges are all solid rock. I see nobody listen to me. I told you there was nothing to panic about. <laughs> uh, Uncle Joe, could you come a little closer to me, please? Would you like to tell me something? No, I'd like to bite you. <laughs> oh, Mom, what are we going to do? We can't budge that boulder. We can't get enough men around these parts to budge it. I'll have to go and get Ding Woodhouse and his heavy-duty tractor. I'll hike over Bleaker's Hill here and catch a ride on the county road. Yeah, hurry up, Uncle Joe, please. i got to get out of here quick. I've got a thousand things to do before Mr. Webster gets here. I'll fly like the wind, Kate. Okay. I hope this little incident doesn't turn you against us having a wine cellar. <laughs> Go! Oh, Uncle Joey, you hurry! Up. Yes, hurry. <laughs> You mean 
And you and this tractor of yours are going to let poor Kate stay in that cave all night? Sorry, Joe. Can't be helped. Old Bess here needs work on her inside. She ain't as young as she used to be, you know. Well, neither is Kate. And she's getting older every minute. <laughs> oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling, Clementine. You are lost and gone forever. Dreadful sorry, Clementine. Th thank you, girls, for trying to cheer me up. You don't know it, but down here I'm applauding. <laughs> Let's give Mom another course in my darling Clementine. Uh, no. Uh, uh, thank you, girls. But I think if I hear once more that part about in a canyon, in a cavern, excavating for a mine, I might scream a little. Would you like some more coffee, Mom? No, thank you, dear. The only thing I'd like is the sight of Uncle Joe followed by Ding Woodhouse and his tractor. Why don't you girls go on up and see if you can see anything, huh? Good idea, Mom. Excuse us, Mom. Nobody yet. No sign of man nor tractor. <sighs> Uncle Joe's been gone over four hours. Mom's sure acting awful brave about it. But underneath, I think she's scared. Uh-uh. Not Mom. Oh? Look, if you were stuck in a cave and you had to depend on Uncle Joe to save you, how do you think you'd feel? Scared. Well, I'm gonna go down and see if I can't help cheer Mom up a little bit. Say, Mom, suppose I recite the Raven for you. No, no, thank you, dear. I, I don't know. For some strange reason, I'm just not in the mood for Edgar Allan Poe right now. <laughs> Say, I'll go get Bobby Joe. You love her singing. Uh, no, so somebody has to watch the desk. Oh, yeah. Hey, how about a game of hearts? Yeah, that's a good thought, dear. But what happens when it's my turn to deal? Yeah. I tell you what, I'll have some more coffee. Okay. Say when, Mom. Hey, like enough. Sugar? Level teaspoon, please. All right. Cream? Just a splash. Okay. Mm. Sounded like too much. Oh, no, Mom, it was just right. Okay, lower away. Ew. What's wrong, Mom? Is it too hot? No, too sweet. <laughs> oh, Uncle Joe, I'm so glad you're here. We've been waiting so long. How are you, Kate? Everything all right? How are you? Uncle Joe, where have you been? Mom's been oh. in the cave for four hours. Oh, girls, where, 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 girls, quiet. Simmer down. Golly, you can't hear it with all that noise. Hear what, Mom? The sound of that dandy tractor as that dandy ding Woodhouse drives it over the hill. Now, shh. I'm worried. Why? Uncle Joe isn't listening. Well, don't worry about the tractor, Kate. It'll be here. Oh, sure, I should have realized. <laughs> you know, a big, heavy tractor takes a little time for it to get over the hill. But what do you figure, Uncle Joe, about five minutes? I'd give it more time than that. Ten. Fifteen? Half an hour? An hour? Well, Uncle Joe, at least tell me if I'm in the right neighborhood. You ain't even in the right county. <laughs> Joe, what's wrong? Where's the tractor? It's in Ding's barn in a couple of hundred pieces. Ding promised he'd work all night to get it back together and have it over here the first thing in the morning. Oh, no, poor Mom. You can't spend the night in this cave. Oh, girls, don't, don't get all riled up. Just, just get me a pillow and a blanket and I'll be fine. This is a real cheerful cave. As caves go. <laughs> And Mr. Webster's on it. Oh, what are we gonna do? Yeah, well, don't worry. I'll think up something to get us out of this spot we're in. <laughs> well, well, come on, Kate. Don't just stand there with your head sticking out of that silly hole. Help me think up something. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Shady Rest. Yes, indeed. My name is Brooks T. Webster. Yeah, Carson's my name. 
better known as your host. I presume you received my wire. Yes, and a beautifully written wire it was, too. <laughs> the convention facilities here, are they ship-shaped? Oh, we're famous for our ship-shaped facilities. How about the meals? Oh, Bobby, is number 12 ready? Yes, Uncle Joe. Now, you'll be in room number 12. That's just up the stairs and down the hallway there to your right. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I asked you a question about the meals. I'd rather answer you about the rooms. Now, the rooms... What, time, the what time is dinner served? Uh, tomorrow morning. We've got to be joking. No, we finished serving the last meal of the day just before you arrived. Pity you missed it. That's ridiculous. It's only 5 o'clock. Ain't you ever heard of daylight saving time? Now, this room... Mr. Room... Carson, I am very hungry, and I insist on being fed tonight. What a friendly tip, friend. Why don't you do like modern thinking, weight watching people all over the country are doing? Once a week, skip a late meal. Great for your figure. I want my supper. You're getting a little spare tire around the middle there, ain't you, Chubby? <laughs> for your information, sir, I am the exact same weight and proportion as I was at Princeton. That's because I play squash three days a week. Hey, with all that exercise, you must be pooped. Why don't you go upstairs and sleep straight through till breakfast? <laughs> oh, Joe, please. If you're hungry, Mr. Webster, you'll eat. And now my uncle will show you to your room. That's right this way, sir. Well, say, I have a great idea. Why don't I take you on our special four-hour sightseeing tour? We can show you Forget all... Forget it. All I want to do is clean up, change, and eat. <laughs> he looks like he's getting ready to eat for a family of five. I know. And if he tastes our cooking, we never will in that convention. We've got to stall him until nine o'clock. Then we can tell him the kitchen's closed and he won't suspect anything's wrong. Stall him till nine o'clock? How? You. That's how. Betty Joe. Are you suggesting that I turn on the charm and sex appeal to keep Mr. Webster's mind off food? I am. Why, well, that's low and underhanded and downright sneaky. You're right. It is. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the work you do is simply fascinating. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think everything about you is utterly fascinating. Well, you know, we've known one another only a short time, yet I feel as though we're close. Uh, quite close, Billy Joe. Uh, I hope you don't mind me calling you Billy Joe. Oh, no, not at all. As long as I may call you Brooks. <laughs> Brooks. My, what an utterly fascinating name. Well, thank you, Billy Joe. Do you mind if I move a little closer? Well, if you want to, I guess it's all right. <laughs> I... I hope you won't think I'm being too presumptuous. Oh, no, not at all. Go ahead. Well, we'd uh, better be quiet about this. I, I'd hate to upset the rest of your family. Oh, don't worry about them. Now, what is it, Brooks? Well, it seems to upset everyone around here every time I mention it, but... Yes, Brooks. Yes. Yes. Well, what I'm trying to say is... I'm starved. When do we eat? <laughs> Mr. Webster, you are unbelievable. You couldn't take his mind off food? You're kidding. But Billy Joe, when you put your mind to it, you can keep a boy in a daze till the cows come home. I know, but I'm afraid tonight. Those cows finally came home. <laughs> oh, we better give up on this, Mr. Webster. Take my word for it, we're not dealing with a real human being. Oh, we can't give up now. I still say there's a way of serving one of your mother's mouth water and convention grabbing suppers. But that's impossible, Uncle Joe. Mr. Webster is way over at the hotel and Mom's stuck way out here. Well, we're sunk. Not as long as you got Frogman Joe Carson to pull you back to the surface. <laughs> now, listen to me. I got a great idea starting in my head. And I got a sinking feeling starting in my stomach. Now relax, Kate. This can't miss. Now, girls, I want you to go back down to the kitchen and bring up all the doodads your mother needs to make one of her scrumptious suppers. Dinner is served, sir. It's about time. I'm waiting half an hour. I'm sure you'll find our food well worth the wait, sir. Now, the first course is a delicious appetizer. It's a Kate Bradley specialty. Them delicious fruit cocktails is assembled from some of the finest imported fruits, all the way from the county seat. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? It was delicious. <laughs> That's what I like, the man who don't waste no time chewing. What's next? Kate Bradley's fresh-picked, slow-brewed, homegrown vegetable soup. Well, could we uh, skip the commercial, Mr. Carson, get right to the soup? And uh, I like my soup just one way, and that's piping hot. 
as you command, sir. One bowl of soup coming up, and watch it sizzle. <laughs> You're right. It needs a little more simmering. But hand me the pepper. I'll hit it with some and maybe he won't notice. <laughs> now, get moving. I've been preparing meals at this hotel for 20 years. This is the first time I ever did it by remote control. <laughs> Smells great. Wait till you taste it. Then you'll be served the dish that's been the favorite of convention after convention that's been held here at the Shady Rest Value Headquarters of Watkins County. I'm speaking, of course, of Kate Bradley's famous chicken and dumplings. Fine, let's have it. <laughs> what slowed you up? Bring on those chicken and dumplings. Chicken and dumplings coming right up, sir. I hope. <laughs> chicken and dumplings. He can't be alone. He must be feeding a great Dane dog under the table. <laughs> the chicken and dumplings aren't hot. They will be after you hit them with some pepper. <laughs> Loads of it. Good girl. Mr. Webster. But be careful about gulping this down. It's got bones in it. <laughs> well, it was a tough game, Coach. I sure hope we won it. Oh, we won. Don't worry. I peeked through the door when Mr. Webster was having his dessert and coffee. Even his stomach was smiling. <laughs> We've got that convention wrapped up. Yeah, I gotta hand it to you girls. I never thought we'd... That sounds like Uncle Joe whistling pitifully from the kitchen door. Well, that can mean only one thing. Mr. Webster wants more dessert. Quick, the butterscotch pudding. This is a job for Supergirl. <laughs> Hi-ho, Silver! <laughs> that child never did get her comic strip character straight. <laughs> Mr. Carson. Oh, sorry, Mr. Webster. We don't allow guests in the kitchen. <laughs> Cook's nervous, you know. Can't stand the crowd. Well, I merely want to compliment the cook on a marvelous meal. Oh, well, I'll tell her when she gets back. She just stepped out. Way out. Do you mind if I thank her in person? Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. She's a natural-born hermit. One look at a strange face, and she quit. Well, I just want to say thanks. Well, what was said? I, uh, I saw something. It was like a, a flash. Oh, probably an electrical storm. We had lots of them around here this time of year. Maybe you better get back in the dining room. Safer in there. That's my dessert. How'd it get here? It's more house policy. Your wish is our command. You know, I think this is the finest food and service I've ever had. It's almost like magic. Yeah. Yeah, in a manner of speaking, you could say that. <laughs> Not even 
gonna shy back. Oh, oh. Sorry. And Ding, Ding, if ever I get enough money saved up to make out a will, you and that tractor are gonna be in it. Good morning, everybody. I looked all around after I got up, but I didn't find the... Hey, what's going on here? Uh, uh, we're, we're sprucing up the entrance to our new wine cellar so folks can get in and out easier. I, I'm Kate Bradley, owner of the Shady Rest. Oh, then you're the one I want to thank for a most enjoyable visit. Fine. Now about a reserve in the hotel for your company's convention. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I'm just the advance man. The decision about the convention is completely up to Mr. Feasel. Feasel? He's the president of the company. He'll be here first thing in the morning. But you can put in a good word for us, can't you, Mr. Webster? Oh, I won't do a bit of good. Mr. Feasel makes all of his own decisions. He never listens to anyone. You're joshing. You mean now we got to start all over and show him how great this place is? <laughs> you don't have a thing to worry about. When he gets here, just, just handle the whole thing the same way you did with me. You know, sweet, simple, and no fuss, and everything will be fine. <laughs> well, so long, folks. Goodbye, Mr. Webster. So long. Bye. Oh, now stop scraping your chins on the ground. We'll win over Mr. Feasel, and we will land that convention. Sure we will, Mom. Only next time it's got to be easier. Right. With you running things out in the open instead of on the inside of a cave, that Mr. Feasel is a sitting duck. Sure he is. <laughs> Come yeah. on, let's get on. Well, this way, Kate, it's safer. Oh, no. The last time I took your advice, I wound up regretting it. I'm going to... <laughs> about that. The first time in Uncle Joe's whole life that he gives me some good advice, I don't take it. Well, you should realize, Kate, that sooner or later I'm bound to guess right. <laughs> but cheer up, girls. Let's look at the bright side. Oh. Uncle Joe, there is no bright side. Sure there is. <sighs> when your ma serves that feasel one of her famous home-cooked meals, it'll be a shorter distance to carry the food from the bedroom than it was from the cave. <laughs> yep. That's the bright side, all right. Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.